Welcome everybody to the midweek edition of our Two on Your Side Town Hall. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mary Alice Demler. And I'm Michael Wooten. We'd like to start off this show by sharing our text line. It is 849-2200. We welcome your questions and your comments. Ahead this half hour, stopping the spread. We know Western New York has seen that uptick in coronavirus cases. We're going to talk live with one of our local county public health directors in just a moment. Plus, Labor Day travel. Do you plan to take a trip this holiday weekend? We look at the national trends and how a local tourist spot is doing better than expected. And then later on, back to school anxiety. We know a lot of parents and students are feeling that. We're going to have new poll results and also a live discussion on resources out there to help. But first, we want to take you live out to Empty Pockets on Hurdle Avenue now, where protesters have gathered this evening. The number of people there has been growing for the last hour or so, with those upset at the bar over the patrons who yelled racist slurs at protesters last night. Yeah, the bar has agreed to shut down temporarily for violating COVID protocols. We're going to be keeping an eye on things, and we will have more on this in a live report coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. So starting off our town hall once again today, the Western New York region had the highest testing percent positive rate in the entire state. Now, aside from a week ago, we had the most new cases reported today than at any point, Michael, since May 22nd. Yeah, not great statistics, but we also had the third highest number of people tested than at any point in the pandemic, and that is why the percent positive rate was pretty much in the same range of what we've been seeing lately for the region. You can see there the rolling average is just about where we were a week ago. Well, joining us live is Christine Schuyler. She's the director of the Chautauqua County Department of Health and Human Services. Thank you so much, Christine, for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you. We know that Chautauqua County has seen a spike in cases along with the region kind of as a whole. And I hate I think this kind of um, puts all of this into perspective. Want to show to our viewers over the past week, the last seven days, there have been 118 confirmed positive cases in your county. Immediately prior to that, it took 40 days to get to 118 positive cases. So you have had as many in a week as you had in almost a month and a half. I know you've been sounding the alarm to people there. At this point, do you think you have a handle on this uptick? And do you think we can soon expect to see maybe these number of new cases going down along with that all important percent positive rate? I think the uptake in, uptick in cases that we've seen is uh, tied to a few different things that have happened. One of those is the outbreak at Fieldbrook Foods Incorporated, which is an ice cream manufacturing plant in Dunkirk. Uh, there we did see a significant number of cases, really uh, not, not so much I don't feel stemming from the practices at the workplace, but more so from um, uh, parties and festivals, pig roasts going on outside of work uh, when a lot of your friends are also your coworkers. Uh, Fieldbrook uh, does have a sanitation uh, process in place where they do sanitize every 24 hours. Their third shift really is a sanitation shift. Uh, we have found uh, a few breaks uh, in, in uh, their processes, which we are addressing, uh, such as better cleaning of their common areas and actually adding additional uh, areas for their workers to take their breaks in so that they're not congregated together without masks on as much as they have been in the past. So I'm very hopeful that we are, I think, getting a real good handle on the Fieldbrook Foods outbreak, uh, working a great deal with um, the Dunkirk, city of Dunkirk and the community at large in that area to really reach out to all of the residents to, uh, again, please implore them to help us with community mitigation efforts. We're all in this together, and if people don't abide by all of the recommendations we're giving out there, then we're all we're not going to get any further ahead with this. And I'm a little worried about that with the Labor Day weekend upon us. Yeah, sure. Well, you sounds like you've done a really thorough investigation and in nailing down those outbreaks. But let me ask you about something that just recently happened in your county. The state came in with the rapid testing machines and a lot of people have gotten tested since Saturday. Now that program ends in less than a half hour at six o'clock today. And one of the sites was in Dunkirk. First, how useful do you think that was? And and do you think there's any chance the state might leave at least one of those rapid machines behind for your office? 
Well, I, I, I think um, the initiative itself was very helpful. That's the first time that Chautauqua County has had a free testing site and had, has had any access to that rapid testing technology. So it certainly, especially at this time with an increase in cases, has been hugely beneficial to us to quickly identify people who are positive and get started on our disease investigation, which includes contact tracing and really placing people in isolation and quarantine who need to be. Uh, we don't get results quite as rapidly as the person who's standing there. We have to wait for those to come through the state's electronic reporting system or the people themselves actually have been calling and notifying us, which has been great. Uh, I do believe that uh, the county executive's office here, uh, and I, as well as I've had discussions with Dr. Greg Young with the state health department in the Buffalo regional office about being able to have the access to those machines, as well as the supplies that are needed uh, to continue to do rapid testing in our county. I'm very hopeful. Uh, and I, I really think there's a good chance that we're going to be able to keep some of those machines, not just in Chautauqua County, but in Western New York. So we do have access to that technology but a machine without supplies and without the controls and everything necessary to run it is only good as the machine. Yeah. Uh, plus the, you know, the labor that's required to actually do a nasopharyngeal swab on the people who require testing. So it's not just as simple as, as a machine, I wish it was, but you know, if you have a car with no gas, you're not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> so we, you know, we really have to have the, you know, everything that the whole picture here in order for us to utilize the machines. Um, the other uptick that we're seeing in our in our cases really is related to uh, SUNY Fredonia. Uh, I think everyone uh, has seen some of the headlines on that. Um, today we had 32 new cases of COVID-19 in our county and uh, reported 25 of those are now linked uh, to uh, SUNY Fredonia students. Uh, I'd like to say that I don't think that's gonna increase, but I absolutely think that's going to increase. I know a lot of students were tested uh, what we're hearing anyway is they're, they're, we're going to go testing at the uh, rapid sites. So I expect those results to uh, be hitting us very soon. Yeah. Uh, and we are working very closely with the administration and the health center there uh, at SUNY Fredonia and working to do isolation and quarantine as best as we can, uh, locking these kids down. And uh, to be honest, I really feel that some of this spike in an increase in colleges we all should have expected. We're looking at kids that are ranging in age, you know, 17, 18, 19, up, you know, they're, they're young minds, they're off to college. Uh, and unfortunately, we know that there have been off campus parties, there have been our off campus gatherings to watch yeah. uh, basketball games and such. And that really is a link to a lot of a lot of what we're seeing here. Yeah, that that's such an important point. Before we run out of time, um, you and the Chautauqua County Executive had a news conference this past Friday going over uh, the increase in cases, talking about what was happening at Phil Brook Foods. I want to pay, play just a part of that for our viewers who didn't see it. Listen to this. I'm very proud of my staff. These have been stressful times and it gets to be very emotional um, because I think um, there are some people out there who do not recognize public health workers are frontline workers. And they are working very diligently to stop the spread of disease in this community. You got emotional there for obvious <laughs> reasons. I mean, you are in charge of the health department. You have workers who are doing all they can uh, to protect the public. Next week is going to mark six months since this officially became a pandemic. Um, in as briefly as you can, do you worry that people are becoming complacent as this goes on and on? And speak to those emotions that you had there and the fight against that complacency. Yes, I do worry that people are becoming complacent. And I worry as well that we have to ensure that we have the proper in investment in public health for us to do the absolute best job that we can do with controlling communicable diseases, which includes COVID-19. And I, we just have to work together. And this is not the time for us to go and point fingers and blame each other, but we all gotta be supporting one another, holding each other up and asking, how can I help not why did you do that or why didn't you do that and shame on you? It really is how can we all together make, do a better job in helping to control the spread of this disease?
Well, it's clear you have an awful lot of passion for the work that you do there. Chautauqua County Public Health Director Christine Schuyler, thank you for coming on and best of luck to you managing these challenges going forward. Thank you very much for having me. Take care. You too.